This video talks about non-disjunction. Now there are many diseases, big important diseases associated with non-disjunction. For example, Edward, Down syndrome, Patau, when we're talking about autosomal anomalies. When we're talking about sex anomalies, uh, then we're talking about Turner syndrome or let's say Klinefelter's or XYY syndrome. These are all due to non-disjunction. So understanding them really, really well is very, very important because you can have a picture like this and you'd have to interpret what's going on. So because we're going to do an example at the end, for the, sim for the sake of that example, I'm going to put this patient had chromosome as A and C. So what happens to these two different chromosomes A and C? By the way, these are the, this is meiosis 1, this is meiosis 2, and this is what's going to go to the gametes. Okay, So keep that in mind. So whatever chromosome we see is going to get divided in half. So we are seeing AC, it should be A or C, or one of them should come at the very end because these are becoming, half of them are, are being passed on. So half of them are going to be present in the gametes. So what happens? So during metaphase of meiosis 1, the A and the C is going to get doubled. So we're going to get, get AA and CC. All right. So this is what happened during meiosis 1. During metaphase of meiosis 2, we are going to see AA here and CC here. Okay, Because they're kind of joined together. I forgot to mention that. The AA and the CC, the joined ones, are going to come here. And then the AAs are going to separate out, and the CC they are going to separate out, right? So these are the ones that we, that's going to go to the gametes. But let's say this is not what happens here. Let's say that there is a non-disjunction, or these kind of the the breaking that happens doesn't happen. So let's say in this case, the non-disjunction happens during metaphase meiosis one let's say let's say that's the case so we are still going to have AA and CC so they're all joined together right if non disjunction doesn't happen both the AA and the CC is going to come here still joined CC still joined now what's going to come here nothing these gametes are going to be empty right nothing is going to happen here this is just obsolete so let, let's focus on these ones so what we're going to end up getting in our gametes is AC and AC, right? Have they, have they separated? Have the gametes, uh, is it 50% of what it should be? No, because we end up what we had in our parent, right? So th this is this kind of disjunction. Where exactly is the di disjunction happening? The disjunction is happening at this stage right so this is a disjunction which is happening during metaphase of meiosis 1 so forget about metaphase for now let's focus on meiosis so this is a disjunction that happens during meiosis 1 so let's see the other option so let's say we have here B and D okay and then B and the D is going to double obviously B B and D D now B B and D D now this is our meiosis 1. I'm just going to forget about metaphase for now. We're just focusing on the disjunction. Uh, so what's going to happen? No, dis no problem happens during meiosis 1, let's say. So disjunction happens uh, quite easily. Okay. So if disjunction happens easily and properly, we're going to end up having BB and DD. Right? Now, if disjunction does not happen, during meiosis 2 or let's say this process is going to get interrupted which is meiosis 2 either we're going to end up with cells such as let's say BB because disjunction didn't happen or DD or depending on where the problem is let's say there was no problem here so the disjunction would would happen here as a result we're going to have BB here but let's say there was a problem with disjunction on this step, so then we're going to have DD here, and this is going to be obsolete, right? So this kind of disjunction is happening during meiosis 2. So those are the two different types of disjunction. Now let's talk about an example. Now in this example, the son has Down syndrome. The father had a genotype of AC, 
and mother had a genotype of BD. Now the question stem is asking when did non-disjunction really occur? Because obviously the son has A, B, and C. There is an extra chromosome more than it should be in a normal individual. So let's start with this. Let's write A, B, C here. That is the chromosome of the son. So if I rearrange this, I can get A, C, B, right? It's just rearranging them. So we can see that the A and the C's are coming from the father. So maybe there should have been disjunction here that was not there because we should not have two chromosomes coming from the father. We should have only one chromosome coming from the father. Now it's clear that the non-disjunction happened in father, but we still don't know when did the non-disjunction occur. So let's start with what we started originally. We had AC at the very beginning, right? The AC became or should have been AACC by uh, prophase. Now at metaphase 1, this is happening metaphase of meiosis 1, it should have been AA and CC. Okay, this should have been like this. Instead, the AA didn't even come here. The AA came here along with the CC. Okay, this combination should not even have existed, but this occurred because this disjunction did not happen properly. There was a problem with disjunction. So we can clearly now say that the non-disjunction occurred at the level of meiosis 1 because we have the A's and the C's together.